Oh, thank you very much. I have to say I'm still stunned by the previous speaker. Well done, that was excellent. I want to thank you all. It's a real privilege to be here, and thank you for allowing me to join you at your TEDx event. In fact, I think it's a real privilege for you because you're really going to understand what I'm here to share with you today about how technology can hopefully make a positive impact in the world that we live in. And when it comes to technology, I think you're really the perfect audience. You are the first generation of digital natives, the first generation of humans who have lived their entire lives completely surrounded by technologies like the internet and social media, e-commerce and cloud computing. These are technologies that have only exponentially affected our lives in the last 10 years. And I think when it comes to these technologies, your relationship is unique. And I know I, I run the risk of standing here sounding like your parents or your teachers when I talk about what things were like in the old days. But when I was your age, things like the internet and smartphones were brand new ideas. And things like social media, Facebook and Netflix didn't even exist. We had to learn and acclimatize with these new technologies. And so for us, we have a different perspective on change. I think it cannot be overstated how quickly technology has changed the world that we live in and how it has impacted every part of our lives. For those non-digital generation natives who lived in a time before the internet and smartphones, we sometimes feel like we're strapped to a roller coaster and can't get off. It's a bit makes us feel dizzy and it's a bit disorientating. But for all of you guys, it's second nature. It's all you know. And so for us, there's a bit of a learning curve. And I think you guys are definitely far advanced in learning and trying to really bring these technologies into your lives. And I think it's amazing to see what the world of tomorrow will look like when we see how exponentially quickly these technologies are changing our lives. I'm curious to see what the next 10 years will look like and how it's going to impact your futures and your careers and your families and your loved ones. There was a study that showed that perhaps as early as next year, AI chatbots will be so common that we will be communicating more regularly with the AI chatbot than with our own families. And at times when you do think about technology, it is scary, and, and the previous speaker mentioned things around that. But what I really want to chat to you about today is how there are opportunities that present themselves to you. Opportunities that allow you to embrace technology, to push change into your own lives, the lives of your families and loved ones in your communities and the world. And how there is an opportunity to use technology as a force for good. And I, the way I can do that really is to share my own personal story. I grew up a lot of my childhood in Lebanon a country that was affected by war and conflict. And I saw firsthand the atrocities and the consequences of war. And I knew very early on that I wanted to be a surgeon. I wanted to be a reconstructive surgeon because I wanted to restore form and function and help patients who are blighted by disfigurement and injury. But unfortunately, what this childhood also taught me was the harsh and dark reality of inequality. <coughs> The fact that those that really need health care the most and are in the dire need of medical and surgical expertise are often those that have the least access to it. And so it became my mission and my dream to try and see how I can try and address this problem. And at the age of 14 and 15, I thought perhaps just being a surgeon was enough and that that could be my solution to try and make a difference in the world. And so I went on and trained to be a surgeon. I've been working in the National Health Service now for 10 years. But still, there was a void. I could feel that I wasn't doing enough to make a difference, and I was barely scratching the surface in terms of impact around the world. And finally, I found a solution a few years ago in a technology that was emerging called augmented reality. Now, augmented reality is a really fascinating thing, and many of you may have heard of it. For those who haven't, you may have heard of virtual reality. Virtual reality takes you into virtual worlds. You go on, you put your Oculus or your headsets on, and you can really travel to faraway places. But what augmented reality does is different. It merges the real and the virtual world. It brings together the physical and the digital, and brings context and color to the world that we live in. 
It's often described by technologists as the ability to paint the world with information. And for those of you who may have experienced it, it's as simple as going into a store and looking at an augmented reality magic mirror and suddenly seeing yourself trying on different clothes, knowing what sizes are available, what colors, which shops you can find it at. It's like watching a sat-nav on your windscreen and seeing where you need to go, where the traffic areas are, etc. But for me, I wanted to do something more powerful with augmented reality, because what caught my eye was the idea to contextualize instructions and information. And if we look at surgery, it's really a step of calculated procedures and steps that get you to an outcome to help a patient and make a difference in their lives. And if we take a step back and think about surgery in the context of inequality and supply and demand and lack of access to expertise to every person that needs it, I started to think, what if I could leverage technology to try and solve this problem? What if I could use technology to allow a surgeon to virtually scrub into any operating room anywhere in the world to visually and practically collaborate with another healthcare professional to make sure that they could deliver best practice to their patients no matter where they were? And what if by levering this technology, we could create a community that could crowdsource content and information and make it accessible, that could democratize this information and break down barriers of access and time and space, and ultimately force multiply every surgeon to the nth degree, to ensure that every single patient in the world gets access to the best care the first time, every time, no matter where they are. And it's with this in mind that I decided to start my own company, Proximy, an augmented reality platform and a software. But more importantly, I wanted to make sure that it was democratized in its devices as well, so that you didn't need to buy an expensive HoloLens or an expensive headset. You could simply use a phone or a tablet or a computer to virtually collaborate. And that went from an idea to a minimum viable product to now a technology that is used all around the world, from Boston to London to Gaza and Syria, South Africa, Vietnam, Costa Rica, Ethiopia, and the list goes on and on, with companies like Johnson & Johnson and Smith & Nephew, Medtronic and Stryker all using this technology to try and address this problem of inequality of care, variation in surgical care, and the ability to ensure that patients get what they're entitled to, which is good care no matter where they are in the world. Now, that is my story and my journey of how I use technology to make a difference. And I was fascinated, as I told you, by augmented reality. And you can see already the pictures showing how it's being used in operating rooms. But when it comes to you, high school students and those probably heading off to college, too, you, as young people, I'm sure and confident you're going to have so many more opportunities to try and take these opportunities of technology and try and leverage it for, as a force for good in the world. You can change the narrative on technology and use it in a positive way. And I think when we look at what the future work will look like, we are preparing you and training you for a future that we don't even know what it's going to look like. You are preparing for jobs that haven't even been created. And that can be scary. If we look at the most common jobs available today or in demand today, it's around cloud computing, app development, and data scientists. These jobs didn't exist 10 or 15 years ago. And whilst that's scary, it also opens up a huge level of opportunity for you to define what your future is going to look like. Because I believe that in these skills and in this mindset that's been so perfected and nurtured by your deep connection and understanding of technology, you have a really exciting opportunity to create a positive and genuine change in the world. Whether it's climate change, hunger, poverty, healthcare inequality, there are so many opportunities, and it is your birthright as the first generation of digital citizens and digital natives. And I'm very confident that each and every one of you is going to take that opportunity and hopefully make a difference in the world for your families, your loved ones, and your communities. Thank you.